Hi, it's Alex. I want to make a potentially controversial point in this video, which is I want to claim that I think for white people, being able to overcome racist viewpoints is somewhat of a privilege. I want to tell a little bit about my story of how I think about race and how it has changed over the years. When I was pretty young, like in elementary school, I was in a mostly white environment. Not exclusively white, but my elementary school was mostly white, and there were not many non-white people living in my neighborhood. As I got older though, that school fed into a larger and slightly more diverse junior high, which then fed into this inner city high school, in which white people were a relatively small minority, and there were a lot of black and Hispanic and Asian students. So I was thrown into this situation where, for the first time in my life, I was a racial minority. And I saw firsthand a lot of things about race from being in that environment that I think a lot of people don't see. One of the things that became immediately evident is how there was this sort of high-ranked track of kids that were bound towards the academically challenging colleges, the higher rated colleges, and this, this group of students was given more challenging classes, and like, generally people who were tracked in these classes ended up going to very good colleges. They often took a lot of advanced placement classes and did well on these tests. And this section was mostly white. There were some minority students in this group of people, but there was a much bigger portion of white people in that group of kids than there was in the groups of kids that were not taking the advanced placement classes. My senior year, I was a TA for like a remedial math class where people were having to take an algebra class before gra graduating high school, and they were seniors, and that class had far fewer white people in it. This is just an example of the kind of thing that I saw. I started to see this racial segregation in our society, and like how people lived in different areas and were given access to different resources, and how I was living a much more privileged existence. I had like more resources at my disposal. So the whole idea of like white privilege being invisible, it, it started to become visible to me in that experience. Certainly not all of it, but I became aware of some of it. What I still wasn't aware of though, I got to college, and I was not yet aware of the fact that most white people in this country grow up in pretty racially homogenous settings. My public high school was very diverse, and it was diverse both racially and in terms of different socioeconomic statuses. There were a lot of wealthy neighborhoods that fed into this school, and there were a lot of poor neighborhoods and all sorts of types in between that fed into this school as well. And we were all there together, and we did mix up somewhat. It wasn't totally segregated. And I learned over the years and years after that how unusual that was. I learned that a lot of America is very homogeneous. There are a lot of cities where there are suburbs of city, cities, and each suburb is its own municipality, and has its own school district, and you have people of pretty homogeneous socioeconomic status and race going to the same schools. There are whole suburbs that are mostly black, there are lots and lots of suburbs that are mostly white, there are suburbs that have like a really large Arab population. People like tend to cluster, cluster together like this. And initially, when I was talking to people about race, talking to other white people, I could sometimes be really frustrated with them. That they didn't see certain things. Like they would be voicing these viewpoints. They're like, like one idea that I hear a lot is like, oh, black people are they must be inherently like tending towards violence because there's a higher crime rate in black communities. And to me it's really obvious. I'm like, well, what about socioeconomic issues? Do you think that that could be driven in part by like less access to jobs and less financial resources? Do you think that maybe black people are like less likely to afford a lawyer, so they're more likely to get off the 
like less likely to get off the hook, and white people are more likely to get off the hook, do you think the police could maybe be racially profiling people, and they're more likely to charge black people with a crime than white people? Like, when I was in high school, people were talking about these issues, and I saw them affecting people that I knew personally. So, I was more aware of them. What I realized, though, over time was that a lot of white people hadn't been exposed to these issues as early as I was. And so, like, when I'm sitting back judging them, being like, oh, like, you're racist, you must have these really unreasonable viewpoints, well, that's not necessarily true. They're just doing the best that they can, given the environment that they grew up in, and the ideas that they were exposed to. And that's why I say that, like, overcoming racism is a privilege. And I want to talk about another way in which it's a privilege, and that is education. Like, both of my parents have PhDs. I come from, like, a very educated family. So I have... I'm tied into all these academic circles. I've been exposed to all sorts of academic theories, and, like, not just exposed in school, but, like, in my casual social network. Like, when I was growing up, I met all these other professors of all these different subjects, and I was exposed to ideas through them. I was exposed to all sorts of feminist ideas, because I was friends with people who, like, one of my friends growing up, like, his mom was, like, an outspoken feminist author, and so, like, I'm exposed to ideas through that relationship. And there are all these things like that that it's easy for me to take for granted. I also grew up in a city. I grew up in Lancaster City. It's not a huge city, it's like 50,000 people, but it is urban, and it has a lot of diversity, and it has several colleges and universities around the area. It's really different if you grow up in an area that is very homogeneous and isolated. And over time, I became friends with people who grew up in other areas, and they talked to me about some of their struggles. And like, an example, I know a lot of people who they talk to me about struggling when they go home for like Thanksgiving and Christmas and Easter and stuff like that, struggling with having to put up with relatives who are constantly voicing racist and homophobic statements. And that's sort of like where they come from. And I think it's great that these people have transcended that. At the same time, like, when I think about myself, like, have I transcended anything at all? Like, I don't harbor overt racist viewpoints, and my parents didn't harbor them. So like, am I really like, morally superior to these other people? Like, I don't feel like I'm in a position to judge people, because I'm just sort of kind of repeating a lot of the culture that I was raised in. So it's like, yeah, I have grown a little bit, but I'm not sure I've grown really all that much when it comes to my views on racism. I think one of the ways in which I've grown a lot, though, is in being a little bit less condemning of other people who might actually be experiencing more personal growth than I am. They might actually be doing more work than I am at rooting out their own internalized racism. I think it's really important to be aware of that. In this whole, like, divide that I see right now in American society, I see a big divide between, like, liberal and conservative. And I notice that the more liberal perspectives are often more common in urban areas. And what do urban areas have? They often have a lot more diversity, and they also have a lot more people together in the same place. They are also more likely to have good universities. People who live in rural areas often are not near a university or a college. They often are living in a racially homogeneous area. They don't have access to as many people in general. I've lived in a lot of different places, and I know when you live in a more isolated area, it is hard. There are a lot of things that are harder, and it's hard to get exposed to new ideas. You come into f contact with less people. This is changing a little bit with the internet, but I still think that that in-person connection is really important. I think it's important to be really mindful of all these things when talking about racism. Like, I think there's a major problem with racism right now in the U.S. And like, the whole past year with the Trump campaign and the election, like, really made me feel passionately about like, wow, racism is a real problem in America, I want to do something about it. Now, I've come to the conclusion that one of the weakest links, one of the weakest points, is that there is a lack of understanding in more liberal, subcultures about how hard it is 
to overcome racism. Like, I know because, like, the few viewpoints that I have been able to sort of root out from my head that I harbored myself that were like racist viewpoints towards like black and Hispanic people, they were hard to even become consciously aware of. Like, when you grow up in our culture, it's easy, we just have all these implicit beliefs like, oh, like, you know, we have these, they're like associations that we're often not even cognizant of, we're not even consciously aware of. It's hard to become aware of them, let alone root them out. And I think it's really important to do so, but I also think it's important to not judge other people because they're kind of not as far as we are on that journey. I think we can help them. Ideally, that's what I'd want to do. And I think it's really useful to look at like where people are coming from, look at their background. Like before I start talking about another person's racist viewpoints, I kind of want to know like what what viewpoints do their parents hold? What viewpoints do their friends hold? Where are they from? Do I even know where they're from? Are they from an area that's all white? Have they lived in an area that's diverse before? I kind of want to know these things. Um, it's really different, I think, the backgrounds that people can come from. It's easy to assume that people come from similar backgrounds to ours. And I think that some of the things that I see people saying are things that they might not say if they really knew a person well, if they knew all the things that that person is dealing with, and all the things that the person knows or maybe doesn't know. I think a lot of racism can be break it, broken down with knowledge, uh, and with exposure to ideas and exposure to people. So yeah, that's what I have to say. I hope that you've gained some insight from this. Uh, yeah, thank you.